Thank you so much for joining us to episode 23 of Deep Dark Tunnel Diaries. My name is Molly Trammell, and you are... No harm. No harm? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so my name's uh, No Harm, but I mean, you guys can just call me Ethan, you know, I'll give you that exclusive, it's my real name. Tell me in excruciating detail what you do. Yeah, so, um... What I do, <laughs> I make music. Um, so basically, I mean, I'll find like a bass line or like a melody I like, and then I just build a track around it, you know? I put drums on it, separate it out into like verse and chorus and stuff like that. And uh, then I record vocals, and then I mix it, make it sound all good, and then post it. Mm, when you record vocals, do you freestyle them? Do you write them from scratch? Do you have them pre written? I always pre-write my vocals for the most part. Um, I don't know. I just, I probably think about my lyrics too much when I write a song, but it's fine. Yeah. No, sometimes, I mean, I do have one like notes file that's just like massive from like two years of writing down random stuff. Um, But I mean, a lot of them are just like one line or two line that I think would sound cool that maybe I'll use one day. All right. It's a serious question. I don't mean to expose you, but have you ever reused the lyric have i ever reused the lyric um i maybe like i'll write a lyric for a song that i never finish and then if i never end up posting it i'll reuse it but if it's like a song i posted already then i won't reuse the lyric you know Mm -hmm. Then, then you've retired it i've also had conversations with you about this before but where would you say you come up with your best ideas lyrically and also where would you say you come up with your worst ideas Lyrically. <laughs> okay. Well, lyrically, um, probably my best idea is lyrically in the shower. Because, like, you know, in the shower, you're just thinking, you got nothing going on. And then um, worst ideas is probably when I'm, like, on a Discord call with my friends and I'm just writing down, like, the most random stuff that comes to my brain. Like, like it's so, like, goofy, just random stuff. Where is your, like, creative vacuum? Like, what is the space where you feel the least capable of creating? I don't even know. Probably, like, somewhere I'm really stressed. Um, I mean, I make most of my stuff in my room, but, I mean, I don't know. I do I do think it's fun writing in new environments, but, like, my room doesn't hold me back that I'm always in there, you know? So It doesn't hold you back? Like, how much does the environment that you create a song in like tint the way the song ends up sounding um i'd say it's less of like the area i'm in you know like my surroundings and more so like just like how i'm feeling in like the time of day like one time i was at my friend's apartment in michigan and i stayed up like all night and then at like six in the morning when the sun was coming up i wrote something like super pretty and like beautiful but then like it'll be like 11 p.m. or midnight or something and I'll write something like darker or whatever, you know That's just kind of how it goes Do you ever put yourself into a different mindset intentionally? Like do you ever start a song thinking I'm gonna make this, you know I'm gonna make this like emo, but you're actually happy and so you just start like oh, I guess not my skin off or something But you're like oh, you're like I actually don't feel awful right now, but I'm just trying to do this for like I mean, yeah, with the with the song like "Know My Skin Off," which is my biggest song. Um, I mean, I, I that was the line I kept with in the shower, and I just sort of made the whole song around it. But um, I I don't really fake my whole mindset. It's more so just like exaggerating it. Like I feel like in that song, like if you pay attention to the lyrics, you think like my partner is like a horrible person or something. But we were just like getting in an argument, like a normal argument. And it was it, like it's totally fine, but yeah. Uh, how many rats could you take in a fight, bro? I don't even know. I like, like if I saw a rat in real life, like in my room, I would probably just like walk away, <laughs> like calmly and orderly walk away. Yeah, just be like, oh, I'm not dealing with that, and walk out. Do you think? Are you a screamer? Uh, like when you see, <laughs> like when you see when you see something in person that's startling you, like even regardless of. Uh, how actually scared you are are you like a flinch like a flincher i do flinch i don't like scream though like at the top of my lungs that's interesting i've always been a big flincher i uh, any bug like i mean 
like, I don't know, like, it, like if I saw like a tarantula in my room instead of like a rat, then yeah, I'd freak like I'd freak out and like throw shit at it probably. Mm-hmm, but rat is lower than tarantula in like the frightening hierarchy. Yeah, I guess I guess if it happens to be one of those like New York City rats that are like massive and and like nasty looking, you know, <laughs> like it might be a different scenario compared to like another type of rat, like something more chill. But yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, mm-hmm. what would happen if you saw like a bug on the inside of your glasses? Dude, that's actually happened um, before. Literally, so I got my glasses in eighth grade. And like two weeks or something after it, I went out for a recess because I I went to like a we still had recess in my school, and uh, literally there was like a beetle, like a stink bug on the outside of my like lens, like the other side of my glasses from my eyes, and I like freaked out and I like took them off and like shake them around and the beetle like jumped off eventually, but I mean, yeah, I probably have the same reaction if it were to happen now, like just take off my glasses and freak out a little bit. Okay, moving on. What's your craziest shower thought? Craziest shower thought? <sighs> I think I think you asked me this in the pre notes, and I didn't even know what to say. I mean, something that's always been in my head is like, I don't know, we're all gonna die one day. Be be kind of crazy. Like, just you get one life, you gotta live it. Like, what am I doing, bro? I'm sitting in the shower thinking, like, I gotta go out, do something. What What do you think happens after you die? Honestly, I kind of think it's like right before you like before you were born like it's just like nothing I don't know. Mm, I agree. Is that like frightening or freeing or like a mixture of both? I don't really know for me. It's kind of just like Like I like I could see how you look at that and it's like super depressing and stuff But for me, I kind of just look at it and I'm like, oh, whatever like it's like the live your life Like you only got one you only got one life or whatever, you know, so just live your life to the fullest type of thing. What genre of music do you make? <laughs> oh, no. I've been telling... Okay, I think I made a mistake, okay? I've been telling people hyper-pop, but now people look at me weird when I say that. <laughs> uh, I don't even know. I mean, I do enjoy, like, the hyper-pop community. I'm a part of it. I consider myself one. Um, I guess it's just, like, trap, hip-hop, you know... Pop, EDM, I don't know, indie, <laughs> hyper pop. It's like a mix. It's no harm genre, bro. No harm. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like, I feel like, like, my music isn't like, it's all like, you know, I don't know. I feel like I struggle, like, sticking to one genre when I make music, to be honest. Like, I feel like I hop from genre to genre a lot. I've noticed a lot of, like, almost like kind of funk influences sometimes not necessarily like traditional funk but um specifically in your workflow like when we sit down in front of the synths a lot of the bass lines that you make are not like hyper pop bass lines they're like more of like a like classic like um electronic rock or like soul bass line like they have a totally different cadence to them but it starts the track off in like a very different place which makes it interesting. I mean, that's how you began on my skin off with the the bassline, right? Yeah, for that song, I you know I had the the one line on my skin off, and then I I literally just like found a bass preset and like um, the mini Moog um, VST, and then I like put a bunch of distortion on it, and I like recorded it, and I thought it sounded cool. So yeah. Mm, and then. How did you mix that song? Did you have any techniques that you used to, like, make it pop out? Oh, my God. The mix for that song, it's by far, like... Like, that song is by far the most, like, proud mix I've ever done. Um, I spent so long on it, and basically, I spent the, like... I did so much, like, panning for, like, the different perks and stuff I used, and then, like, the bass specifically, like, if you actually take just the bass of the song and listen to it, you'll notice that there's not actually that much low end at all, and that's just because I wanted it super loud, but if you have, like, crazy amounts of low end, it, like, restricts you from pushing the limiter more, because then it starts to clip more, and it's, like, I don't like the way it sounds, um... But yeah, it's like, 
I, yeah, the bass basically, I, I have like a lot of boosted high end, and then like the kick is side chained with it, and it hits all the same like notes at the same time, so it gives it like more punch than just like a normal synth bass, and yeah, it's kind. So do you always do you always synchronize the kick and the bass on your songs? Because sometimes I want to make syncopated kicks that can go outside of the bass line, but it always ends up kind of making the rhythm feel clumsier and not like any more interesting i mean the, you're it's always a safe bet to go with the kick in the 808 or the bass just hitting the same time all the time sometimes like some songs you can get away with it though like adding a few more kick hits you know think of like jazz music and stuff and like the drum lines compared to the bass and stuff like like you can definitely get away with it in certain in certain aspects i guess are you a visual artist at all I mean, I make thumbnails for, like, YouTube videos sometimes. <laughs> My girlfriend's a visual artist. She draws and paints. She's super talented. Where do you get the covers for your song on SoundCloud usually? Um, most of my covers, I feel like, are just random pictures I take, and then I just open up Photoshop and, like, layer them and mess with the opacity or, like, some of the, like, effects, presets, you know, like the, uh, like, liquify and... Um, you know, distortion and stuff like that. What's something you always go back to? Something I always go back to? Oh, I actually, like, I, I really like watching, like, history videos on YouTube. So I, I find myself going back to the same, like, like data graphs and animations and shit. It's kind of, like, lame, but I, I love it for some reason. I'm a history lover, too. What's your favorite historical fact? Favorite historical fact? I mean, I don't know. I just throw, like... I don't know, like, humans evolved in Africa 200,000 years ago. That's a fact right there. That's a fact. Yeah. Like, I love learning about, like, early humans into the, the... Like, it's so fun learning how, you know, other humanoids were in the past. Do you think you would be a hunter or a gatherer? I don't know. Probably a gatherer. I'm more of a beta male. <laughs> <laughs> What's something you always say yes to? Always say yes to? Uh... Probably like a a good like glazed donut. I've had donuts on my mind all day today. <laughs> Where's your favorite place to get glazed donuts? I don't even know. Like, I've never been to Krispy Kreme, but like, there's a gas station near my house that has Krispy Kreme donuts, and I I like those. So yeah. <laughs> What's something you always say no to? Something I always say no to. Uh, when my mom makes lasagna, I never like lasagna for some reason. <laughs> When did you start making music? I started making music. Well, my first uh, like experience with music was when I was fourteen. I started playing the guitar. Um, I really, I actually really wanted a drum set, but my parents said no because it was too loud. <laughs> so my mom was like, "Why don't you just get a guitar?" And I was like, "Okay." So I got one, and I loved it. I like fell in love with it for like six months. Uh, now I'd never play it, of course, but <laughs> I started a. Uh, uh, after that, I got into music production uh, when I was 16, and I've been doing that ever since. Just I started on like GarageBand, and then like after a year, I upgraded to like Logic, and that's what I've been using. Mm -hmm. Your song "Growing Apart" has a guitar sample at the end. Where is that from? Did you play it live, or did you find it somewhere? No, that one is from Looperman, actually. Um, you know, I'm a Looperman soldier. I'm not gonna lie. But yeah, sometimes you just don't feel like busting out the guitar and like I don't have all the notes memorized, like all the names or like, you know, I don't got perfect pitch. So like if I hit a, a, a B note, unless it's like on the E stream, like I probably don't know it. So like I got to like count them out and stuff like that. Uh, so sometimes it's just easier like to find a sample if you want something in key. I don't know. It's, you know. Do you use splice ever? Yeah, um, I always sort of wanted Splice, but I, and I never had it until like a month or two ago, and I was just hanging out with a friend, and they gave me their password, and, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's, now I use it, so yeah. How do you feel about monthly subscriptions for music software? I feel like monthly subscriptions, like, I know why they do it, and it's because like it's harder for you to recognize like how much money you're spending. Like, you're like, oh, it's only $10, but then, like, you'd have it for two years, and you end up spending, like, you know, 250 or something, you know? And it's like, 
you know, you don't, but you wouldn't pay the 250 up front, so that's how they get you. I, I don't really like monthly stuff. It's always kind of just like, you gotta watch how much money you're spending. Understandable. Do you watch how much money you're spending? I mean, probably not enough. Yeah, little did you know I'm actually rich as hell. I'm like yeet, basically. I didn't know that YouTube producers get this much bank. <laughs> Bro, I literally got put like five beats to YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I don't really enjoy just making like straight beats just for other people that much. Like I, I like making music for myself. Um, but I mean, I've never made money for my music stuff really, so this is sort of my attempt to make money from it if I actually become more consistent with the YouTube beats. Have you ever performed live? No, I have not. When do you think you're going to perform live? I don't know. I've thought about, like, submitting to Gay House, you know? Like, the, the one we go to sometimes to, to see people. And, like, uh, there's a person named Proxy. Oh, my God. They, they perform there sometimes and, like, some other people I know. So I've been thinking about that. But honestly, like, I don't even... Like, I feel like I'd be so nervous. But th at the same time, I should probably just, like, let go and, like, actually do it. How much music do you have in the vault? Too much. <laughs> Literally. So SoundCloud, if you don't have, like, the paid subscription, only lets you upload a certain amount of, like, file space. And I already have it almost filled out just in private tracks. Like, I'll have to start deleting private tracks on my account. Um, even though, like, at public tracks, I only have, like, I don't know, like, 19 or 20 out. And it's, like... Would you say you have more songs unreleased than you have released? Yeah, definitely. I mean, a lot of those unreleased songs, they're unreleased for a reason, you know? I'd, either I just never got around to finishing it, or, like, I just don't really like it that much. Um, but, like, yeah, I definitely have more unreleased stuff than released stuff. If you could get anyone in the world one of your tracks right now, who would it be? Kanye. Kanye? Yeah. On God? I mean... To be honest, I didn't really like Donda. is 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 good, but it's not. It doesn't step up to his other albums that I love. Um, but yeah, I mean Kanye is a huge inspiration. He's always a solid pick. If you could steal one song and like have it be yours, what song would you steal? If you could steal one song, would you capture it or just let it slip? I say like flashing lights. I like that song a lot. It's really good. Yeah. <laughs> what would you say you prioritize when you're listening to music? Is it is it the lyrics or the production or a combination of both? Like what usually captures you when a song is like truly captivating? Uh, definitely a production. Um, I don't know. Like Kanye is known for having some like whack ass bars sometimes, but like. I totally look past it if the if the production's like ungodly, you know what I mean? So I agree, me too. I, I I always feel disappointed because I don't listen that closely to bars sometimes. Like I don't judge them as harshly as I judge mixing and production and sound design. But I always feel a bit sad about it because I feel like there could have been an even crazier song, you know? Like, I always feel like the songs with the best production have just, like, mid-bars. I mean, here's the thing. Okay, so I think production is more important. And generally, just, like, the vibe of the track and the quality of it is more important. Well, quality. Just, like, the mixing, you know what I mean, is more important. Um, but, I mean, good lyrics always help. You know, it's never a down turn to have good lyrics is there anything else you want to say in this podcast yeah uh, follow my instagram at no harm 99 i mean i i'm i mostly focus on my soundcloud right now but i gotta get my spotify game you can i want my stuff on spotify you can go listen to it i just got like 15 monthly followers because i don't promote it at all but yeah no harm thank you so much for crawling into my cave thank you i'll crawl in at any time yeah. Now playing Now My Skin Off by No Harm. You can listen to No Harm on all platforms where music is streamable. Two weeks of drug 
for that breaking now Snap me constantly, ain't trying to know Don't want to in a rope, why can't I be a fire? Love attention, can I ever for one? I can't fly, sit back and open the cold I can't lie, you make me wanna knock my skin off like You make me wanna You make me wanna Are you an underground artist who would like to be featured on Deep Dark Tunnel Diaries? Follow us on Instagram at Deep Dark Tunnel Radio for more information. The world is city.